This right here is the thigh master of urban public policy. Municipal politicians all across the country have convinced themselves that this costly, clunky hardware can somehow revitalize their flabby downtown economies. And the streetcar fad has now infected America's capital city. In 2009, the DC government started building a two mile streetcar line on 8th Street, a rapidly gentrifying neighborhood that's this area's closest approximation of Brooklyn. This is how it was sold to the public. The modern, environmentally friendly transportation option designed to connect our district neighborhoods. After half a decade in development, the streetcar finally started going on test runs. And those TED Talk ready projections have collided headfirst with the concrete realities of modern urban life. $200 million dilemma. The ill-conceived design so close to parked cars has led to numerous accidents. There's not enough space for big trucks to park. It's gonna make our job a lot harder. We saw a streetcar that was stopped because the operator had to ask a legally parked driver to fold his side mirror. A hundred-year-old technology that might have been state-of-the-art in 1915. The streetcar had to sit and wait for almost 30 minutes. Meanwhile, a metro bus and several cabs could keep on moving. You can walk faster than the streetcar can take you. The streetcar project's problems have been greatly compounded by the fetid incubator of human incompetence that is DC's Department of Transportation, which is promptly set and then exceeded dozens of deadlines. Will it ever open to passengers? That's all you can do. So about half of the cars in the DC system were sourced from an American company called United Streetcar. That firm sprung Athena-like from the forehead of this man, Ray LaHood, who served as the Federal Secretary of Transportation for the Obama administration. Streetcars are really the next generation of transportation for America. LaHood doled out about half a billion dollars in federal funding for about a dozen city streetcar projects. The M1 rail project would literally move the city in the right direction. This can become a model for the rest of the country. United Streetcar was the glittering crown jewel of these efforts. And to tell its story, we head west. Portland is home to one of the biggest streetcar systems in the country, so its local congressmen proved to be natural allies in the Hood's attempt to create, from nothing but federal largesse and breathless speechifying, what would be the first American streetcar manufacturer in 50 years. I was able to put in one of those things, they call it earmark, not all earmarks are bad, in fact most are meritorious. Gave the city of Portland $4 million for a made in America streetcar that I believe within a very short period of time we'll be exporting. People talk about the vision thing. This is it. This is the definition of the vision thing. Would you like to guess how this turned out? United Streetcar is now in hibernation. With no requests out there right now, this probably is a good business decision to kind of put that on hold. United Streetcar sold to just three cities and then died from lack of demand. But streetcars aren't just a case of colossal government waste driven by grandstanding politicians desperate to erect throbbing monuments to their enlightened leadership. There's also a sick kicker. Many metro areas have cut their bus service when they've put in rail service. To pay for those cost overruns, they end up raising bus fares and cutting bus service. Several cities, including Dallas and Los Angeles, cut back on their bus lines after installing light rail. Here in the capital, the most recent budget from local transportation officials ended some routes and trimmed hours of operations for others. And the effects of that cost shifting split along clear demographic dimensions, which, I don't know, might be evident between DC streetcars core enthusiasts. It'll be nice to be able to get my friends from Northwest to come over here once in a while. I think they're doing good. I work right there. I see them passing by every day. I just wait for them to open. And detractors. A horrible decision. And I think it's just a waste of money. You got buses, you got cabs, you got bicycles. It's really unnecessary. Let's get it correct. When DC streetcar does finally open, upwardly mobile gentrifiers will have been gifted a charmingly retro transportation option. At the same time, the streetcar will be sucking in resources that would have been much better spent boosting genuinely useful, but certainly less sexy transportation programs like buses. I don't know if it's just for the white folks, and I'm not being prejudiced, it's just that, what is it good for? Y'all don't really want it. Why? 
what y'all wanna do.